My name is Andrew Fall and I was born and brought up in this area. Uh, on the surrounding streets was my playground and this where was the vetch used to be a main part of it. Um, this year was the front of the old west stand where the main turnstiles were down that area. But as little kids on match days and non-match days we used to sneak in and play football on the pitch on non-match days, uh, run about the stands, get into general bits of mischief really. Uh, the first area I can think of sneaking in was in this area here where there used to be a gap in the wall about the size of a breeze block where when mid no, early 70s when we were small enough we could actually bunk each other up, sneak in, get cut and land on the other side and then pull the others through. Many a time the fans that were already in there, grown-ups, used to help you down. Used to pull you down and then used to scarp her off and into the stand. And if a steward ever caught you or saw you, you just ran into the stand, into the crowd, where they, you'd never find you there. What you can see behind me here is, I think, the wall of the tunnel which used to lead from the turnstiles over there to what used to be the West Bank and I started watching on the West Bank because it was the nearest to the way if you walk down from the uplands where I used to live this was the first bit of the ground you came to and kids who were from the west side of Swansea like me very often used to stand on this bank. See the goals were there we were uh, say 10 yards to the, to yeah. the right on to the, the, left, the yeah, first yeah. barrier from the front you know the about Eight yards back, yeah, you know? yeah. and it's brilliant, a brilliant view. Oh, yeah. I remember the promotion matches, I remember being excited, and the next season I wanted a season ticket. And if you wanted a season ticket, then I don't think you had any choice. I think they only sold them for the for the big bank, for the North Bank. And I was still, I suppose I was a bit, uh, a bit of a wimpy kid because uh, I must have been 14 by then and I was still a little bit nervous about going to stand on the North Bank. And there was a guy who used to be my mate in school, a guy called Graham. And um, he used to tell me that they used to sing one, one, two, three, four, five. If you want to stay alive, keep off the North Bank. The atmosphere at that end of the North Bank, especially, was so loud. And, and my dad had to put me on top of his shoulder so that I could see the pitch because there were so many people, and we were right at the back as well. And I just remember being on top of his shoulder. I don't even remember who we were playing, what the score was, or anything like that. I remember watching the football, but I remember listening and joining into the chants, even though I was only eight at the time. Once I found a place on this bank and stood and watched my first game in its entirety, you could feel the passion and the heat and the power of the people going towards the players, and they would feed. The players could feed off it. It was so close to the pitch. We used to be standing on this terrace and behind the goal here, but down the far end, which was the north bank, on the far end was where, the, what I, I call the hardcore, all the, the, the tough lads, like, you know, and they'd be chanting, and the atmosphere used to be oh. absolutely brilliant. Yeah. All I know is that when I walked in there and stood and watched that game, the noise that was coming from this stand was ten times as much coming from that stand, twenty times as noisy coming from that stand, this is where the noise was, this is where the passion is. It looked stunning. It was like your first view of colour, because up until then you'd watch football on a fairly small black and white TV set. A Friday night. A, fr a floodlit game, yeah. you know, under the lights, you know. Yeah. Oh, the atmosphere, yeah. You know, but with 4,000, yeah. mine, not with 20,000 yeah. now. Yeah. You know. With 4,000, used to make yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. As it got darker, you could see the floodlights come on, and you could see all the people lighting cigarettes on the north bank there'd be these little sparks up in the darkness and it was and then as the lights came on the pitch was just illuminated and you saw the white players for the the swans i don't know something just captured me and i don't think i fully understood the football at all for a good couple of years because i'd never really liked football before and in school football was for the boys even then you know even though it wasn't that long ago um, and then just never sort of turned back and I think 
I haven't missed a home game probably since I was about nine or ten. You just used to, used to pretend that you were in that white shirt playing football, whether it be playing football on the beach or whether it be playing football by the Salvation Army or on the pitch when you weren't supposed to. It was just so, so much a part of your life. You know, you could go around the back of the South Stand after the games and see the, fact, the players walking out and get autographs on your programmes, you know, because you knew they were going to come out of that little tiny bar that they had at the back. There was only one way out, so you knew, so you could go and see our heroes, if you like, at the time. If you're talking to me, uh, we are playing Stoke City in, in the FA Cup uh, fourth round and uh, in, it's about 20 minutes in the second half, it was one each and Stoke were playing for the draw, you know and uh, my hero, of course, I were all church ball was crossed from the, the right wing and he was standing on the, the far corner of the penalty area and he hit it on the volley he did, you know and I could see it going in the net and the force of the ball took it at the roof of, the ball seemed to hold up in the mm. roof of the net be, you know, before it came down and the old goals, yeah. the crossbar and the post Everything they were shaking right. yeah. and of course it put us 2-1 up and because of the cup as well, you know that was my, as far as I'm concerned, the greatest goal I've ever seen. Like, yeah. yeah. I think for me, there's two goals that stick in my mind. One of them um, was in the cup, in the FA Cup, and um, it was against Preston, Andy Robinson's free kick. And that was the goal for me. I don't know why it sticks in my mind. I was sort of down that end of the north bank and right sort of in line from where he was taking it. And I was by one of the barriers that was on the north bank. And as soon as he hit it, you could see he was going in. And so when everyone was celebrating, it actually ended up that I ended up getting crushed against the bar. And I think that's probably part of the reason why I remember it. And um, then Trundle scored the winner and then, then just Trundle shortly the after, winner, didn't yeah. he? Like, and then that sent us well. into the fifth round of the cup yeah. then. And then the other goal for me that sticks in my mind was um, Adrian Forbes against Shrewsbury as oh, well, yeah. putting it past Joe Hart. It just I'd forgotten it was Joe Hart until I yeah. saw the trust box yeah. and the yeah. photo in it. Yeah. And I, I was astonished. Like, oh my God, yeah. I didn't realise the goalkeeper was Joe Hart because he's the England keeper. He's incredibly famous. We played against him in the yeah. Premier League. And the, I think for that goal sticking in my mind is just because of that was the last season down the Vetch. It's a bit weird knowing, knowing that the Vetch is gone. Uh, it was the first time today I've actually gone into where the Vetch was and walked around and it's... It seems a little bit eerie after all the memories that we had from in there during football and non-football days. It just seems so different, but it seems so peaceful. And I'm glad they haven't actually built all over it, that they've left it for people around here, like the kids are playing football on it now. And that's the way it should be. If you, there's too much building work going on, really. Seeing it now like this, with grass and kids playing on it and the vetch veg, I'd like them to leave it like this. I think it's just beautiful. And they've left the walls of the old North Bank as well. And the bank is there where the North Bank was. And it just sort of brings back little memories of you get your bearings. Well, I said uh, I'd never go up yeah, there, did didn't yeah. I? And I, I said, uh, the Vetchfield is what is, but the Swans is all about for me. I don't want to go up the Liberty, I said. And of course, when he comes to town, like, we was up there, like, weren't we, like, you know? Picking yeah. out seat before it was built. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Yeah, we had to go in there with uh, builders hats, you know, the hard hats and the, the yellow coats to show us around where we wanted to sit, like, you know. Yeah. It was just a fixture. I just lived down here. I, I loved the place. I loved the texture of it. I loved the fact that it was falling down, that it was all the wrong shape. I loved the atmosphere. I loved the different atmospheres as well. I mean, when we were in the lower division sometimes you it would be just moaning and complaining and people getting cross and about 20 skinheads at one end starting try, trying to chant and then when we were in the first division the team would come out to 20,000 people and the back of the old north bank which was over there was built up on girders it was concrete steps on girders and it used to move the team would come out and we would be up on the back bouncing it used to bounce up and down and you used to think, look at the bank after, thinking, it's old, it's decrepit. Why hasn't this fallen down? Of course, you've got to progress. I mean, oh, yeah, you know, it, it, it was, it it was, was gone, fallen, you know, falling down, and, no you know, toilet, yeah. sadly. But we we weren't too yes. bad by yeah. her because this was the, the last of the, this was called, still called the new stand, you know, 20 years on, but compared to the, the rest of the North Bank. It, 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 really it's 100 years now we celebrate, yeah, and I think yeah. the toilets were there 100 years ago, yeah. to be honest. <laughs> As you said, you know, it's still, although most of them are, are not uh, local players, 
I mean, I can remember when he was probably, I wouldn't say 11, but probably we had 10 local boys playing, you know, all from the area. And uh, he was so proud of them then. But even now, although they're not uh, from this area, they still they come under Swansea City. So I, I, I've had the hard times, so I'm taking the, the good times <laughs> now, like, you know. I'll be supporting Swansea till I die.